through practices, and we grant degrees, and they in PhD degrees, our students and our faculty are the heart of this institution. Then there are fellow programs, seminars, lectures and symposium, and publications, including a book series called Cultural History of the Material World, and a journal called West 86th Street, and we also have our own digital media lab. The gallery, which you are about to experience, located up the block at 18 West 86th Street, caters to both our academic community and to the public, of which you are now an important part. We should understand that we are not a museum in the conventional sense, as we do not have a collection. Rather, we <coughs> organize exhibitions and have an ambitious publishing arm that use that, and we display objects and we make books intended to enhance the public's awareness of the cultural history of the material world. In 20 years, we have organized more than 50 exhibitions and published, published close to that number of books some under our own auspices and others with Yale University Press. The gallery has an education department and Melissa Gerstein, who's here with us tonight, represents that department. We organize public lectures, outreach programs, and have a suitcase project that takes our exhibitions out into the New York City public school system. So then the question is, why Google Glass? And I guess the most direct answer is the role of this technology that some of you are already wearing can potentially play in interpretation. In its most basic form, what is interpretation? Well, it's the way that we convey to the viewer what they are looking at, not just in the actual object itself, but how we bring information to interpreting that object, to animating what you see, to offering connections to the artwork through other disciplines, or in this case, in this exhibition tonight, through information that the language of the Google Glass will bring to you. Now, this is an interesting question because most people come into a gallery and they see a label on the wall and they read that label. And one time, a consultant to the BGC, when we wanted to have a gallery guide rather than a label, said to me, but Nina, I want to hear that whisper in my ear when I see the object on the pedestal. And that whisper in that context was actually the label, the wall label, the language written down. But what Han and Zach have enabled is a different manifestation of that whispering voice. That the visitor, either herself or himself, can actually control that whispering voice use that whispering voice to navigate their journey through the exhibition. And I hope that when you're in the gallery tonight, you will actually contemplate that visit as a journey with your glass. A journey that each of you can experience in a shared way through the program that they've conveyed, but also individually through how your individual minds embark on that journey. That you share this and that you use this experience to listen and hear what the glass is telling you and that it helps to enhance the technology and your experience with the technology but i also help hope that the stories that this exhibition has to say or has to convey and i told Patsy that i think it is among a myriad of serendipitous <laughs> circumstances that you are here but one of those is the fact that World of Weavers happens to be the exhibition on view now. And I hope that you will share the experience of that technology, but that you will tell people also about the exhibition, because Water Weavers has many important, poignant stories to tell. Not only about Colombia that it focuses on, but about the lives of all people throughout the world. So I welcome you warmly and I hope that your experience is a journey that you will remember and that will be useful. Thank you.